Greetings and welcome back, everybody, to Treading Grain Podcast. Now, I'm not sure if y'all can believe this, because I sure can. It's episode 26, and during that time, we've been able to interview six Big Ten champions. We've interviewed a three-time Olympic sprinter. We've interviewed a professional basketball player. And we've also, by the way, had a chance to interview those who we once knew back then and those who we're continuing to know and grow with and develop with. And that's an important thing to mention because who is sitting right here with me is somebody who I can't say enough about. But folks, before we get into it, I'll tell you this. This is one story that that really speaks to, to my heart about who this girl is to my left. So our senior year, uh, and excuse me, Kara, as I'm going on a tangent about who you are, but I have to do this. I have to do this. I, I was in charge of doing all the broadcasting for Wilsonville High School and like trekking around the state of Oregon, you know, making it happen and, and didn't think twice about it until uh, this care package showed up on my front door one day. And, you know, in that thing were like, I mean, snags, gift cards, and my favorite, favorite piece in this world, which was a handwritten note uh, that was, you know, essentially to the tune of b Rec, my, my stage name, quote unquote, you know, Thank you for doing everything that you've been doing. Um, we just like appreciate it. We see you and we hear you. And there was also a uh, photo collage of some of my greatest in action shots. Frankly, I don't even know how this resourceful woman over here got them. I, I don't know. But, but I say that because Kira, it gives me a really, really great pleasure to be able to introduce you as now four years removed from that, now a basketball player at Hope International and somebody who has overcome trials, tribulations of her own, even some things that, and this is what I really wanted to hit on when I was telling that story. Hearing that, you'd think, oh, it's, it's you know, peaches and cream. It's fun and games for, for Kira as well. But folks, that's not always the truth. And importantly here, I want to make this distinction clear because we were talking about kind of the, the show and how it was going to look today. And, and I thought, you know, what would happen if we took a single concept and we said, okay, well, let's share stories and verses and moments that impacted how we feel about this concept. So without further ado, this is Brian Rector on Treading Grain Podcast with Kira McNamee, who's a hooper in Fullerton, California, but for now, back home in Oregon, and just awaiting her beck and call to head back down south in a few days. But folks, this is episode 26 with the title Trial by Fire. And here's Kira McNamee. Kira, how are you doing? Hey. That was really nice. You didn't need to share that. <laughs> uh, that was super nice of you, and I'm glad that made that impact. But yeah, I'm home right now. It's been a quick summer getting back to home life, and then heading out here in a couple of days. But yeah, I'm good. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And before we get into the thick of things, I want to say thank you for being here. I know we've been able to talk quite a bit off camera, which I'm glad about and fortunate for. Uh, but with that, off camera, you said something that was so important, which I, I think we have to mention on camera. Now that you and I are entering our senior year and we've been, you know, in seasons of being away at school and seasons of being home and, and reconnecting with who was there, you know, what are some of the things that you've learned about yourself as you've been doing this balancing act between school life and home life? And how are those two similar? How are they different? Let's start there. Yeah, um, obviously moving away from home is a whole new experience that 
many people go through and it's never the same for anyone as you know you went through the same thing and yeah the coming back is a pretty surreal experience you didn't realize how um much love that a community has um for you as you've been away from it from a lot for a while but um yeah i being in fullerton i've built like a great community and i love it there and one of my favorite things about when i'm back here in the summers is i get to help coach with the wilsonville high school uh women's basketball team and that is one of the best experiences it kind of gets to i kind of get taken back into those years and it's such a fun experience to see those girls in the settings that I enjoyed so much the the full gyms the travel tournaments and things like that and yeah uh there's definitely a bunch of different steps and leaps that you notice going back and forth but I wouldn't change it and I love it so <laughs> You yeah. know, I'm very glad that you just mentioned what you did and for a couple of reasons. But number one is, Kara, for those folks who are listening who haven't seen her play or haven't seen her in that competitive environment, this show is going to inevitably be titled Trial by Fire. Now, the subject of the show is trials and hardship, but the fire piece comes from the fact that this girl right here has some of the most fierce competitive spirit that I've ever seen. And that's even true today as I'm sitting here at Michigan State. But this is important though, because I can't even begin to imagine what it would be like to be seeing you working your magic and speaking your speak on the court as a coach. That is something that makes me very happy just sitting there. Yeah, you could ask some of those girls. You might get some great things. You might get some, dang, we're in high school. It's okay. <laughs> Comments from them, but it's a good experience. Yeah, there's only one it. way to go. You know, the only thing I can think of when I hear this is we might be seeing the indoctrination of the next Coach K. But it's, oh. it's, it's Kira. It's not Shashevsky. Forget about it. Kira. <laughs> I, I want to get I want to get to a different level though because we just spoke about your fire and your intensity and your attitude and how you approach things and I think that's important to acknowledge from a field of play perspective but also I happen to know something that you've been rehabbing and you've been working on an ankle and you've been recovering and you've been doing battle mentally and physically, I would imagine, with kind of reinventing yourself and recreating yourself as an athlete and a player, what has that meant to you? And how have you used the attitude and the mantras of being that one who's fierce and spirited inside to be able to get through that type of, you know, recovery and, and reaction? Yeah, so like you said, I had surgery in March on my ankle, and um, what's the date? Let's see. It's the 8th. I've been fully cleared for almost two weeks now, which is exciting, um, obviously, and let me tell you, since March, it has been a battle, and I as much as it was physical, there was a lot of the mental aspect of it being basketball has always kind of been an escape for me. And having that taken for a period of time definitely helped me see the value and the importance that that holds in my life. And that I think also God put me in that position to see that because luckily I haven't I hadn't had a extended injury prior. And because of that, I think part of me took my sport and my love for it for granted. And so I was able to see just how much that impacts my life. And 
I've definitely had to do a lot of work on build, rebuilding my strength and uh, stability, but more than anything, it's the mental side of it. It's not being able to, can't sleep, I go to the gym and I just go shoot around or anything like that. Um, but it's it's had a huge impact and I wouldn't trade it, but there is a lot that has gone on and it's been a trial in my life as small as it may seem as not playing a sport for a few months it definitely put me through some tests for sure yeah yeah and I think you just wrapped that up beautifully uh, because what I've been able fortunately to capture with the different conversations that I've had across the last uh, shoot coming up on a year now it'll be a year of doing this in a, about a week um, is that there comes a point where you recognize that your identity can no longer be in your sport and the sport may be fulfilling in some ways and that can always be true but the question is, when things come crashing down, when the walls that you may have built uh, around you by way of dribbling a ball and shooting and scoring, you know, when those things change, where do you turn to? And so with that, I was curious is like, have you seen like in the ways of your faith and your position under God in the kingdom, like, what have you seen as changes and what has your dependability on him and his word been throughout that time when you've been undergoing seemingly a shift in that identity between yeah. player and person? Yeah, um, I would say my greatest shift in my faith that has occurred in the past few months was my understanding of I was I told you about this earlier um there's this quote that you see in a lot of places where it talks about how God gives his greatest challenges to his strongest soldiers and I used to extremely dislike when people would say that to me because I didn't quite understand it I was like are we why are you putting me through this God why am I in the situation and they would say that and it would almost anger me for the reason that, why me? Why am I being pulled out of this situation? Why are, like, why isn't this somebody else? And in this moment, I have had to realize that it's the understanding of his love and his trust rather than his abandonment in us. And this trial that he is putting you through is giving you the opportunity to grow and become stronger because he wouldn't put you in that spot unless he knew you could handle it. Um, and ultimately, I learned that I'm not going to be put through things in my life that God doesn't think I can handle and that he's always walking with me. And that's not going to be something that switches up. And kind of going off of that is worship has become a big part of my life in the past, I would say two months. Um, just because I've become to realize God does so much for all of us. And even in the smallest things that we don't even notice. But worship is the one thing that we give God that he can't give us. And I, to me, that is so special. And that's something that blows my mind anytime I think about it. Because he gives us grace. He, for, he gives us forgiveness and everything in between. But one thing that we can give to him that we aren't just reciprocating is his the worship we can give him. And that's become such an important part of my life. And I... Yeah, that's been a big learning curve and 
change in my faith in the past few months. Mm. Dang, I want to give a little clap for that. <laughs> and so here's why, here's why I'm bringing that to the table is truly, truly, I had not heard it that way before. I had not heard it that way that you just described it as that is the one avenue which we um, are not bestowed upon, is not, you know, worshiping us. That, that's only a one-way relationship, right? That was really special, Kara. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, um, even him giving us the Bible, he's giving us a tool to learn. Mm -hmm. We're praying. We're praying for something for us, for our mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And goodness, you worship, and that's that's all we can do. For him. Absolutely. And I love it. Yep. Absolutely. What are some of the things that you pray about often, Kara? You know, there's there's a lot of things that kind of go in and out. And one of my biggest things that I try and stay consistent is for, for grace. And because we've all gone through things that mistakes happen. We go through trials that we don't handle well. We handle conflict in a way that we necessarily shouldn't have. We, whatever it is, um, I know I mess up far more than I would like to say that I do. And I would say grace is one of the biggest things that I pray for and just forgiveness for things that I've done in the past or ways that I've handled things in the past. And just that he sticks with me. And I know he will, but just that reassurance that he's taking these walks through life with me especially as school begins to finish and real life and our own path begins to be paved I just the love that we can have from him and it's I continue to pray and thank him that he sticks with me through that stuff and that's something that I find really important mm. Mm. And, you know, I've found a few times already that the way you have answered has led magically into almost almost divinely, Kara, into where I would like to go, which is that I want to set the scene for everyone out there who's listening. So you mentioned what a moment in time has been of working through this injury aiming to get back on the basketball floor and, and these ways in which that you have evolved and changed and learned. But I wanted to know if you would be comfortable with sharing is looking over the course of time, what are some of the, the key moments and the, um, uh, how do I want to say this, the most important and like pivotal trials, tribulations, and times in your life that have allowed you to see this concept of working through trial? Yeah, so I grew up in a religious household. However, with my sister and I's extreme uh, devotion to sports, um, sometimes to a fault, um, church necessarily wasn't a every Sunday activity or anything like that um so my first big trial of my life was big at the time was moving I grew up in Sherwood and all of a sudden we picked up within a month of me figuring it out we were moved into a new house in Wilsonville and that was a big moment for me and I was quite angry about that and um, I wouldn't trade it because I've met great people and made great connections, but that kind of leads forward to um, the familial issues and turbulations that occurred and their impact on me um, with 
those things, my mental health declined dramatically. And I um, went through extreme bouts of depression. And with that came um, my anxiety that I already had, but just increased that. And that was kind of a really dark point in my life. And through that betrayal, the anxiety, the depression, the anger, the resentment of whatever had been going on, I was blessed enough to come out with a relationship with God. And that would is something that I would say was my first, like, my first step toward the relationship that I have with him today. And um, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was put at that moment to get through it by God, because he knew that's what I could, that I was capable of it and I could do it. But as time has passed, I've come to realize I, I've had moments where I go back to those times and I go back to that extreme depression and anxiety and thinking about that stuff and new um, thoughts about those issues come up. And I, you kind of asked me about this the other day. And so I've thought about it a little bit and it's come like greatly to my attention in the past few days that these things that I thought I was over, I did get over and I dealt with, but as time has gone on and I get um, presented with these emotions that I dealt with at that time, I am realizing these are things I probably couldn't have handled at that point in my life. When I was in my teens, when I was going through the struggles of middle school and high school and all that comes with that, all the drama, all the fun stuff, um, I wasn't able to, I don't think I was able to deal with that. And I think God knew that. And so it's a continuous work in progress. And yeah, that's probably the most recent or not the most recent, but the biggest and first trial that impacted my life um, and pointed me in the direction of my faith. Mm. Um, so following that, I started FCA with you guys and um, going to church every Sunday and praying and just all the beginning steps to starting to create that connection. And so, yeah, that was probably my first big one. Mm. Um, and obviously college basketball, you're going to get some ups and some downs uh, to say the least. And I definitely had to had a uh, couple moments where I didn't know if this was the path that I should be on. If basketball was the gift that God wanted me to pursue. And that was probably the most prolonged and extended trial with my faith. And heck, I still struggle with that sometimes. But um, yeah, but it, I also know that I probably wouldn't have gone to a Christian university had it not been for basketball. So my faith continues to grow as I'm not only surrounded by people that are brothers and sisters and devout Christians, but I also am getting my minor in biblical studies now, which is cool. Um, so that's just one of those things where I questioned that why basketball was somewhere I went and if it was the right thing, but even if the only thing that I got out of it was connecting on a greater level and a deeper level with God, 
it's all I can ask for. Mm -hmm. Kira, uh, I wish I could give you a hug right now. I just, I want to <laughs> say, I want to say that. Uh, thank you for being willing to share and for, um, eloquently I'm laughing because you were telling me the other day about how you were fearful about you know public speaking and all that I seriously I say that not to say you know that uh well just to say that I appreciate you and that hearing your story over again um uh, I just one thing leaves me mind boggled which is that there's a girl who changes physical location, deals with family things, but then decides it's incumbent upon me to find my community at FCA and go out and earn that, and or not earn that, but, but make an effort to be a part of that. Yeah. And then, and I, I know I'm hearkening back to the story I told about you initially, but I think it, it spoke highly to your character back then and it still would. So I want to say it is in that question is like, how do you, and if you could summarize it, I would, I would love to hear it. It was like, how did you get from that low point that you were talking about to being somebody who was willing to go out of her way to make somebody feel like they were doing a, a great thing for the community, you know, and, and be acknowledged in that way? Because when I think through that at age, you know, 16, 17, 18, it's like, that's really difficult to make sense of how that would come about. And I was just wondering if you could speak on kind of that like servant heart and that giving space that you have for being able to turn that negative into that positive. Yeah, um, it's a great, great question. And I'm not sure I could even fully give you that answer. It's just something that I kind of feel like I've used as a coping method in some ways in the moments where I feel like there's nothing that I can do within myself and for myself in the situation and the point that I'm at. Just seeing somebody else enjoy something and get acknowledgement for the things that they do. There's something that just, I feel like that is another gift that God has given me. And it's the, the happiness that it gives me to see other people appreciate things like that. And I, like I said, I, I couldn't tell you what initially drew it to me. Maybe it was the selfishness of it making me happy, but um, yeah, I, I could, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you, but mm. I do think God has given me that gift to do that. And that is something that I need to continue doing. And I enjoy doing. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I, I think one of the conversations I had recently was just a, um, in part about that was about stewarding gifts properly, you know, and managing um, what you are cut out to do and discerning um, who you're going to be. And I just, yeah, that's something that when I hear you say that, I'm like, wow, you know, the the wherewithal at, at that young to, to say that. But talk to me about your college experience. So I, I understand that, obviously, you've been at a Christian university. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I, I think also it's worth noting that back at Wilsonville, there was community that you talked about. Uh, with having FCA and, and believers around you, strong, strongly rooted families in the community. Yeah. Uh, between high school and college, like what are some of the things that, that you've seen that are commonality? Excuse me. Uh, what are some of the things that you've seen that are commonalities between um, those people who are kind of on the front line, so to say, um, leading in studies, you know, impacting change on campus like is there anything that overlaps that you've seen yeah um again as I said I didn't grow up in the church at Sunday school things like that and so I've 
kind of been that person that is in some ways behind for lack of a better word in my faith and being that person that isn't all knowing the obviously none of us are but doesn't isn't able to pull out a certain story for every little moment that happens and I've been in a position where that's not how I am able to be at the moment but I've been surrounding myself with people since those years in high school and currently that um are willing to have those conversations with me and um I think that's important in any situation especially in our faith and I've kind of yeah the there's so many parallels to um the faithful community that I had here in Wilsonville but also the one that I have built in Fullerton and honestly it's about finding your people because without the people that I have found in both places and their love and strength and devout devotion excuse me devotion to God and yeah it there's so many parallels <laughs> sidebar here but i just thought about this have you gone back to see jenny recently i haven't i need to i should i should have while i was here mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i definitely should have <laughs> i didn't even oh yeah i definitely should have went up, went over there dang have you seen her recently yeah yeah i saw her um shoot when I was home and actually I've been fortunate that we've been able to be on the phone um oh, quite okay. a few times, which is great but um and like texting and all that but I went there it was something like um July 1st or something it, it was right yeah. around the beginning of July okay like, I was recently, yeah but, yeah I wish I was I wish I she was obviously a really good example of a leader in yes. in faith and stuff like that and yes. i wish i had developed a greater connection with her one-on-one -on -one. i mean mm. obviously as a leader at fca and things like that we had group meetings and stuff and we mm. spoke but i do wish i created a better foundation with her um then for sure mm. you know what i would tell you Kerr? And this is just kind of me going out on a tangent, but I got to say this, this is important, is it's never too late. It's true. It's never too late. It's uh, true. In fact, that's, that's something that I've been trying to make a habit of recently, which is exactly why I wanted to sit here and have this conversation with you, is that what I've recognized, and you touched on it, uh, just a little while ago by saying it's about who you are with and it's about the people and the connection that you create is that this summer I've been able to we spoke on it off camera I've been traveling around the country I've been you know leveling up in business so to say uh, I've been doing some cool projects you know and I've just been going 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 but to offset that I've had a long time of being on the road to just think about how things work. And so what I've been doing periodically throughout the summer is just coming through my like contact list, all my socials and giving messages, sending messages to those who I truly believe made an impact um, on me in previous time. And I just think like, one of the things that that is key to talking about with trials alongside of the idea that it can uh, strengthen your dependency on God and it can help you understand that your life is not yours alone uh, and that there's, um, you know, seasons to life is that when you get through a season the best thing you can do for yourself and those around you is to take note of who was there and what they did. And it's like seeing inventory. 
And when you get through it and you can visualize, hey, this is where we've come from, then you move back to it and you go, hey, quick, 20 second voice memo. Just wanted to tell you, this is how I feel about this moment. This is what it did for me. Um, and this is where we've come from. So I would implore you, I'm not saying you have to, you know, I, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is, you know, I, I think part of that process of more fully healing from things and discovering what's next is by recognizing what was and giving thanks to those people who were there at that moment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Great point, Brian. <laughs> How let me ask you something though, because that just brings in another place that I want to go though, is how are you doing with your family today? How is your relationship with them at current? Yeah. Um my parents are my best friends. Me and my parents have been since my senior year of high school. They you ask them anything about me, my life, they've got it. Hmm. They know me better than I do and they know every step that I take um and my sister so it's just me my sister and my parents mm -hmm. um my sister is doing amazing she's working in the Lake Oswego school district mm -hmm. um with some young kiddos which she loves she just got the assistant coaching job at Wilsonville for girls soccer so oh, wow. congrats to her if she's watching yeah <laughs> um, yeah 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 yeah. shout out but, here we go yeah so my whole family's doing really well um yeah they my sister still lives around here so her and my parents get to see each other a little more often than I do with with either of them but phone calls facetimes all all of that and yeah it's it's great I it's another thing where the tough times led to something greater that probably wouldn't have happened if those difficult moments didn't mm. so yeah, yeah. I, I'm very so. thankful <laughs> certainly and you know one thing that just struck me right there is you called the relationship you have with your parents a friendship and I think that was something that can certainly matriculate as we get older. Uh, but that's something that I wanted to touch on a little bit is like, if you had to kind of assess it, uh, how, when did that start to turn of like, they are once the great oversight, you know, and, and being um, central guides and directors, but now it's like, we can have that back and forth type of understanding. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. They, they still keep me in check, <laughs> but um, I think it's as I've kind of matured through my, the past few years and begun to go through, I say real life because in high school, really thinking about it, there's so little that we had to worry about or stress about at least I was fortunate enough where that was something that was the case and I think as I started to go through things on my own I started to realize kind of the aspect of the way that they have been living their life I guess and I started needing help with stupid regular things that you wouldn't even think about like I was trying to, don't make fun of me. I was trying, I was trying to pump up my car tires. Okay. And I was struggling with one of them. I could not figure it out. And so I FaceTime my dad. I'm like, Hey, I don't know what's going on. I need your help. And he just walked me through it. And like, I don't know, it's little things like that, that a lot of people don't have that relationship and I'm very, very thankful that I do. Um, and by no means is it a strict, is it just a friendship because I am 21, but I still get put in my place at times and I respect them for that. Um, but 
yeah, I think it, the the change really happened with maturity and also not necessarily living under their roof and being around them 24 seven. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. What you just said makes sense. I, I think that distance accounts for a lot of that change. Um, that's in a lot of ways what I could say certainly I felt too. Um, mm-hmm. But let me ask you this is like, what are, what are some of the things, because there's a, there's a difference between our parents on earth and our heavenly father. There's a, there's a similar type of, you know, uh, wisdom and instruction, but there are levels to everything. And so I, I was wondering is like, what are are there any ways that you've seen God work through your two parents that has then instructed you on the back end? Ooh. Great question. Ooh. Goodness, that's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> is there any way that I've seen? Hmm. honestly it's probably everything they do um there's a little bit of god working in everything that they do um whether it's for me or them just living their life Mm. um yeah i don't that's a such that's a, a really interesting question but you know, hear, hearing you say that, though, it, it makes sense to me and kind of confirms a little bit of what I thought, because when you sit here and say, well, I grew up in a house that was religious and attended church and spiritual and have this background, then I, I can look and like ask that question. And when you say it comes up quite often, I go, then it's working. Uh, <laughs> that, you know, that's a that's a beautiful thing. Uh, but how about this? How about this? Um, and obviously, I'm not sure, you know, about your future plans and family and, and all this conversation. That's a, a different day. But I say that because uh, what about anything, Kira, that you've taken that you would like to pass down to kids of your own sometime, somewhere? Uh, got some time. Got some that's time. Right. That's but, right. Um... But, lessons and you know moments that stick out of like yeah you know um being a child of god this is kind of how that looks this is how i'd want to uh share that and and move down the line with with that wisdom yeah um i think like kind of we talked about earlier my relationship that i have with my parents um that's definitely something i want to take forward to my family later on um and I feel like I would incorporate a little more of um not to say that they didn't but incorporate a little bit more of um God's grace into it and adding a little bit of connection to the Bible and um just in the sense where um my parents were always really on me about forgiveness Mm. which was something that I really struggled with and in due time it worked out but um I think incorporating um the fact that God forgives everything God is great (laughs) <laughs> to say the least um I think that would have helped me in the sense that as humans are and Christian humans our goal is and our we strive to live a Christ-like life as much as we can and I think as little as forgiveness seems that's something that I can really incorporate um into my life because there's a million things that deserve forgiveness or um 
are relevant. Um, another thing is um, I want to be able to um, have my, I want my kids to live a little bit more than I did. I'm pretty, I'm anxious, I'm reserved, like reserved in the sense that I don't like change. I kind of stick to my stuff for the most part. Um, and my dad's always told me, go live your life, go live, live a little, like that kind of thing. And I think that's something I want to carry forward. And the fact that I'm not saying go commit sin, go do all these things. That's not what I'm saying. But in the fact that you're going to make mistakes in your events of living, we are not, we are not God. Um, and addressing the fact that those mistakes are okay. We don't go out and try and do them, but those mistakes are something that we have to endure. Heck, life is messy. Life is messy and it's messy for everybody. And that's what's so great about God's grace. And like I said earlier, that's something that I pray about a lot. And that's something that I would for sure want to carry over and make very known in my household that God is a very graceful one. Mm. Mm. You know, I find, I find what you just said incredibly fascinating for two reasons. Um, number one is I was listening to or watching, I should say, a, a, a podcast this afternoon um, in preparation for our show about how uh, there is a mega church pastor who was living and working in New York City who had wife, two kids, who went on to actually have an extramarital affair and cheat. And it came out in the papers in New York and, and became a, a large scene. And then from there, everybody uh, in, in and of the world, right, who thinks that they should be entitled to their opinion and they should speak on that matter of what's happening inside that family unit, was casting their vote on you should stay, you should leave. But the crux of the story is that the wife and the, the victim in that case was able to, um, they as a unit were able to reconcile. And now the way that they speak on it today, it's stronger than ever. Uh, but out of that, uh, and that just hit me as, as you were speaking of how important that is especially going into this next chapter of our lives, because there will be those moments where it's like our sinful nature takes over, whether it's a argument, whether it's a behavior, whether it's a trait, whether it's an event, there are inevitably going to be moments in time where that detail and that like, um, you know, piece of God's character of, willingly forgiving comes up in droves and so out of that Kira I wanted to know if there's been a, a time in your life where you've received forgiveness where you felt like maybe you were undeserving or a time that was difficult to give it but you did anyway yeah um well, let's just put it out there. This really hasn't been a conversation that I've had with just about anybody, but maybe those very closest to me and my mom. Um, I was not a nice kid in elementary school, early middle school. I regret a lot of the way that I acted and I hold a lot of guilt from that. Um, but I have had some people from those times reach out to me and not saying, oh, I forgive you for anything, but reaching out and checking on me. And maybe it's not saying I forgive you, but that is like, that's a way of showing forgiveness. And I don't necessarily believe that that is something that I should have received. Um, but 
that's the way that some people work and that is beautiful and amazing um but yeah there's definitely been moments where I probably don't deserve the forgiveness that I am given by both people and by God but mm. yeah mm. thank you for for mentioning that uh, you know what would be interesting as I'm sitting here thinking about it is is doing a deep dive into those people who have reached out and understanding if they have a relationship to Christ and what their background is. And I would be curious to know what that is, because if they do, then the point remains that grace and love abounds, which is what I was going to say, right? Is like when like one of the fruits of the spirit is having that ability and being blessed with the understanding of of giving that forgiveness uh, and and accepting it. But if not, though, I'm sitting here saying, where does that strength come from? And the only yeah. thing that I can think of is that it continues to be Christ, whether those out there are acknowledging or not, right? And I would be, I would be fascinated to do a dive into that. Yeah, um, that would be very interesting for sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to think of those people and think if there's anything that, I mean, just if, if you don't say anything or post anything, that doesn't mean you're not religious. And so that's right. That doesn't really give a whole lot of room for me to look, but I'm trying to think of like, social media of theirs or anything like that that maybe would yeah i'm not i'm not sure that would be really interesting to find out for sure mm. and actually uh now that you say that about posting versus not on social media related to your faith and and your uh like background and and where you're coming from i really want to know kara is like how do you view the like public professions of faith? How are you going about that? Um, and yeah. is that something that's been important, not been important? Where Where is that in your list of priorities? Yeah, so I think in everybody it's different and I don't think there's a right or a wrong way to go about it. Um, I can see why people do and I can see why people don't. Yeah. For me personally, I um, have no issue posting about it. It's not something I'll post all the time, as I honestly don't post all the time. But um, I do like something as little as keeping a verse in my bio on mm -hmm. Instagram. Or mm -hmm. I've posted pictures of me. I pray before every game. I've posted pictures of me praying before games. Mm. Um, and I don't have an issue with it. I, if I'm compelled and I'm drawn to do it, I will. Sure. Um, but I don't feel like there's a right or a wrong or um, anything along those lines. I don't really, really think I think about it if I'm going to do it. Mm. It's just kind of something that I, I do. Um, but yeah yeah i you know really once again great leave kira uh great assist here you know in your bio is the verse from first peter it's chapter five and it's six through seven and i wanted to know kira is like why is it that that passage resonates with you and what are some of the things that you think about when you read it and uh, you know why why is it there why is it something that you do profess outwardly for for others to see yeah so i've always been a pretty big advocate for mental health mm -hmm. and um just part of it is um it talks about anxiety and being humble and that god is there for you and for me I think it's an important verse for everybody involved because society and human nature kind of rushes us into everything. 
but it's in God's timing um, and for God of what's important that's in our best interest. It's not the speed of which we do it or anything like that. Um, and if we're always rushing and looking for something to show off, we are not, um, we're not living our life for God. We're living in a flesh aspect. Mm. Um, and with that comes the anxiety of it. If you're so, if we're so worried and consumed by the idea that we have to show something for it and it it can overwhelm you and i feel like that verse incorporates the humbleness the anxiety side of it the we can relax because we have god and um i think it's just a good reminder for myself but also if people go on my account and see that and they look it up maybe there's somebody that's struggling with their anxiety and silence and that's something that can help them as well. Um, so yeah, I, that's, it's an important one for me as anxiety is really prominent and a big struggle for me. Um, it's one that I definitely try and remind myself that in God's time, we, will be okay and he takes care of us can i share something with you yeah i feel i feel compelled to share this right now uh because i think what you just said is so important for accepting and acknowledging weakness and understanding that while we may not be posting each and every day while we may not be publishing everything we come across the key in doing it at our weakest moments and with our weaknesses, so to say, is, is the idea that because of the nature of social media and being connected to thousands of others with a snap of fingers, is that we can impact people who may, we may not know need it at that moment. Yeah. And and impact change in instrumental ways. Uh, I say that because, Kira, you may know this, you may remember this story, but um, I've had a couple of surgeries on my back. Mm -hmm. And um, what that's done is it's kind of uh, not prohibited or like disallowed, but it's limited my amount of wear and tear I want to put on my legs and my back. Uh, so like, for instance, one thing that's, that's quite effective is running for me. That's something that's always been a weakness, something that I shy away from that I'll only reveal to those who are right here at the tight knit circle. Yeah. But last night I actually ran for a mile. Um, I saw that. I yeah, saw that. Congrats. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, for the first time in like years, I mean, a long, long, long time. And um, with that, I, I kind of posted a verse. I didn't reference where it was from. Uh, it's from Corinthians, but I said, or the word said rather, not me, uh, said, you know, essentially like I am choosing to boast about what my weaknesses are and revealing who I am on my worst day. Uh, and, you know, I, I think that relates back to on my best day, I'm a child of God. And that same thing is true on my worst day as well. Yeah. And the sooner you recognize that is like, oh man, that's free. You know what? Yeah. I, I can be wretched and a sinner and wrongdoer and, you know, whatever superlative that you want to put out there. And it gets flushed away by the salvation that you earn by placing faith in Christ. And yeah. so when you were speaking on that, I just, I wanted to share that moment uh, because yeah. that was something that was new to me, you know, but, but something that I'm thankful for. And, and I think ties into uh, the whole mental side of things of being accepting right. and being willing to acknowledge, Hey, that's something that has been a struggle and something that I, I, um, 
have not shared, but I should because what happens when somebody who's watching that looks at it and says, oh, what can I do today? What can I do today that impacts my life and changes it for the better? And it's this chain reaction of like, you know, keep pursuing him and keep doing great things because if you do and if you keep running that gosh dang race, then what is the overarching platform going to be that you've created? Uh, so I love what you said there. But let me ask you something, Kara. What what do you think about the concept of being involved in mental health advocacy and even working in it down the line? Is that something you've thought of? Is that something that's heavy yeah. on you? Talk me through that. So though it's more physical than the mental side, um, I'm going into diagnostic medical sonography. Mm. And so... In a simple term, I'm not a technician. It's, you think of a radiologist, it's like that for ultrasound. I see. Um, and so I'm going to be dealt some tough hands and see some things that um, could be some of the worst words that some people hear. They could be some of the most relieving words some people hear. And... I think having the background that I do in the mental aspect will not only help me through that career, but also I'll be able to make a greater impact on those people mm. as well. And I do hope to, at some point, may it be in time, but um, continue coaching. And uh, I think that's a big value that I will hold throughout that career. Um, of coaching and installing that in my athletes and stuff. Mm, certainly. Well, listen, thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here. And um, we'll let you go here very shortly. But before we dive out, there are a couple more things I wanted to touch on. Uh, and they're really simple back to back to back. So I hope we can tie it together well. Uh, the first thing is, Kara, as you're headed towards another season of basketball and aiming to get back on the floor after the recovery and everything that you've endured, what is one thing that you want to do or see happen within your team or within yourself in your basketball game? Ooh. Ooh. I'm excited. So we have a group, a new uh maybe like five new girls. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a interesting beginning of a new dynamic. And I'm excited to see how that goes. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the next part of that is as we're easing towards graduation and working on these kind of next steps, um, is there anything that you've thought about in terms of a faith step to be taking over your last year um, and what does that look like? What's your vision for that last year? Yeah. Um, I just hope that I can continue to grow in my faith and take those steps each day to become more knowledgeable and um, a tangible thing. I, I really want and need to start reading my Bible more consistently. So that is definitely going to be a goal of mine um, mm -hmm. in this upcoming next phase absolutely absolutely well i will say this confidently kara that it's been a pleasure to sit here and chat with you and um, i'm very very proud of now learning more evidently about uh where you've come from and and kind of bringing me full circle into what some of these moments that we shared meant uh, and moving forward, I'm just so happy that we were able to do it and reconnect and wanted to say thank you uh, for for being here and then give the floor to you for anyone you wanted to shout out, uh, anything you wanted to give thanks to, uh, you know, last parting thoughts, the floor is yours. Oof. I mean, there's so many people that I could put my faith 
uh, journey into them ushering me along. Um, shoot, here in Wilsonville, you, Emmy, Sydney, um, the Graves family played a big part in that. Um, at school, I'm just surrounded by so many people that want to help each other grow. Um, there are two people that I play with that I more than anything want to strive to have their devotion and connection and willingness to share the grace and love of God. And that's my teammate, Kala and Shay, Lissa. I, big parts, big parts of they've been, they've played. Um, yeah, but with that, I hope, what, what episode do you say this was, 26? Yeah, yeah. All right, and I think you said you have a 27 coming up. I want, before you get to episode 30, I want to hear you and your story in the past couple years. Wow. Wow. I want to hear it. Because you've had a crazy one too, and you're always out there it, taking it out of all of us and letting us share. And I think you have a amazing story as well. And I think everyone would love to hear it. Okay. Uh well <laughs> to my court, I guess. Let me ask you something before we before we dive out of here is uh a thank you uh for for saying that and for for making sure that people out there hear that uh, it might be tough but yeah you know do you have any thoughts about how i would go about that because here Great i'm question. i could just i could just rap at a camera for an hour <laughs> but like you know you know yeah. so, i don't know i'm i'm thinking about immediately when you hmm. say that my mind jumps to how would the medium work for for doing it most effectively okay this literally just came to my mind i don't know if this is plausible if it makes sense if it would even work if it's like episode 30 you have every single person that's been on the show ask you some question and you just have a clip sent in of them asking you a question and you rolling it out Wow. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. I, I need to get to thinking about this. It'd be good. I'm interested. I think it would be very fascinating. Put you in a little little on the other side. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's cool. You know, admittedly, I've only been on the other side of this equation three times in my life. So, yeah. It needs to I, happen again. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's... <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. Well, yeah. thank you for planting that seed. That's what's best. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, thank you so much for having me on and everything. I, it was super great talking to you previous, before this, and on this. Like, It's been a big blessing of mine to be able to hop on here with you and catch some time. I know we both have crazy stuff going on right now, crazy life, busy, mm -hmm. and just thank you for thinking of me and bringing me on here. Absolutely. Absolutely. And folks, that's it for us on episode 26 of Treading Grain podcast with Brian Rector and today here at McNamee. Now, I hope you all took um, just about everything out of that show uh, to extrapolate and make sense of and bring forth in your walk um, with Christ. And I'm like, amply excited to see where we continue to go um, throughout this next month, but there probably won't be too much action happening because we'll be on the road. Uh, we'll get mad updates from those moments, but then moving into this senior year um, and the race to the finish. And we hope that all of y'all out there can um, stay along for it and just keep treading.